Radiance Eye Cream. Now, I love an eye cream. This one is delicious. Mm, I hate an eye cream. <laughs> Today, we're going to be reacting to Brooke Shields' skincare routine, analyzing, scrutinizing, and learning from the five steps that it looks like she uses as according to Harper's Bazaar, and see how these products work for her. Let's see what she puts on her face. Hi, I'm Brooke Shields, and I want to know, do you want to go to bed with me? Now for this particular nighttime routine, I am going to be using five different products. So the first thing that I'm going to do is remove my makeup. So this ginger turmeric, turmeric, not quite sure how to say it, it's a True Botanicals Cleansing Balm. And what I love about this balm is that it is rich and creamy, but does not leave a greasy residue. So I put I have makeup on right now. So I'm gonna put it all over my face and my lips. I'm not scared of it, even on my eyes. And then I will take a little bio-friendly pad, because I don't use the cotton pads anymore, and warm water. I put it on the, bad, the pad, hold it between my fingers like this, and do the first layer of removal, and you will see how it takes it off immediately. I used to use very, very hot water. Um, I have a tendency to have more dry skin than oily skin, so that's what I love about this cleanser. I'm just gonna pause it right here. <laughs> There's so much going on. I'm going through like all of the human emotions. First off, I'm so happy she's using True Botanicals. Turmeric has some great antioxidants. We're gonna talk about the product. I love the eco-friendly makeup wipes, but then the sink was left on and I started to get itchy and my anxiety took over because I'm waiting for one of my parents to come in and yell to turn the water off and slap my hands. I thought I told you to turn that thing off! And also, she's really, she going aggressive. I've gone aggressive in the past too, but she's going aggressive and um, she's just so beautiful. Like I just look at her, maybe it's lighting. I don't know what she's had done. She is gorgeous though. And I think it's, I don't know, her makeup, her structure, but taking that personality out of this, oh my God. So True Botanicals is actually a really cool brand. I think they're based here in the San Francisco Bay Area or they used to be. Let's take a look at the ingredients of this cleansing balm. This is a ginger turmeric. Now here's the thing, with ginger, we know that it's a root, it's amazing, it is delicious delicious and it is wonderful, but it can be irritating to the skin. Uh, you know, ginger can kind of be spicy, not in the same way that jalapenos are, but in a similar way. There was this TikTok trend of people putting ginger directly on their face and it burned them. Like, don't do that. Sometimes ginger, when put in skincare products, it is stabilized and I would assume that's what's being done here, but I wouldn't be worried for people who are super sensitive. I would personally just stick with the turmeric. A lot of their stuff is organic, wild harvested. They do this clean beauty marketing that I don't love, but the products themselves I don't hate. Uh, it actually has azelaic acid and lactic acid inside of this cleansing balm. And I think that those would work better in a leave-on product, but I love that True Botanicals, from my understanding of the products that I've personally used, as a brand, they take these True Botanicals, but they also include products that are actually proven by science, like lactic acid and like this azelaic. So we have some oat kernel, this is great. Sugar cane, ah, there's some lemon in here, and then there are some fragrances like limonene, geraniol, and little. I wouldn't necessarily recommend those. Obviously this is not for someone who has sensitive skin. But this does, you know, have a base of sunflower seed oil and vegetable oil, avocado, jojoba. It's a nice oil cleanser. For 48 bucks, I would normally say get a cheaper oil cleanser for the same amount of money. But this does have lactic and azelaic, which you couldn't really get in a lot of others. So I do feel like this is unique. I'm just... Why is she rubbing so hard? If it works so well, why are you scrubbing so hard? And I love these little eco-friendly makeup removers. They're so good. I'm like physically itchy with the water turned on and I'm afraid that one of my parents is gonna spontaneously pop into the room and scream at me for having the water on. <laughs> I think that's called emotional damage. Is it really keeps your face moisturized. And I usually finish with just a regular washcloth that I wet. Ah! Okay, the <laughs> water is still on. It's just so hard for me. It's my pet peeve. I need to keep it under control. I know, but still. Also, I forgot because it was bothering me so much about the water. I love her, and I'm going to take my feelings about who she is and her out of it. 
the hairline. You can see that there's like product gumming up in the hairline. The hair ties and headbands, they are not necessarily essential. You don't always have to use them, but please do. Otherwise you get it all gunked up and maybe this is her natural hair and she doesn't have to worry about that. For me, my natural hair is very, very curly and mine frizzes up like nobody's business. So I try to protect it when I do it. Product in the hairline. It can actually cause hairline acne. Fun fact. I don't know how she's not soaking her hair with this, but that is that talent. That is skill. Talented. <laughs> and my mother always used to say, moisturizer and cleanser, keeping your face clean. She used to say soap and water. And so I used to use bubbly soap because I thought that that squeaky, dry skin feeling meant that my face was very clean. But because of this, if you notice, just warm water literally took off all the makeup. And you can see how clean it makes your face, but it doesn't make your face feel oily and it doesn't dry it out. That sort of really dry, that kind of dry feeling that I find some soaps some soaps do. Sometimes I have to say, I, okay, so I had my eyelashes dyed, so they look like they are still dark, but I have been known to go to sleep with uh, not taking my eye makeup off, which is really bad. But sometimes if I wear a waterproof mascara, I don't take the time at night, but. At least she's honest about it. What most people don't know is that if you wear mascara or waterproof mascara to sleep, think about how mascara coats the lash and kind of makes it crunchy. Like if I were to bend my hair, that'd be fine, right? Now what if I put some sort of a sealant on it and tried to bend the hair, it could actually snap. And that's how people get a lot of broken eyelashes or eyelash fallout if they sleep in their mascara, fun fact. I love that she's honest about that. I think it's really important because it happens to a lot of people. And I was looking at her, I was like, you removed your makeup? Her lips must naturally be this color. Maybe she's had her brow filled in. I love that she told us her lashes are tinted because I was like, girl, what? Ep like, wow. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if this is a tattoo. I don't know if these are microbladed or not, but she is absolutely stunning. Again, that is my subjective opinion. It, it goes to show that if you want to have a lower maintenance beauty routine, there are some permanent makeups. Some are more dangerous than others, like tattooing makeup or the BB microneedling. Don't F with that. That's a terrible idea. Uh, but the idea of like a tinted lip stain that lasts two to four weeks or tinted lashes uh, that last two to four weeks or even brows. It's a good idea. Go Brooke, go. Though I do look at this routine now, whereas I used to look at it as a chore that I had to do for just, you know, for my work or for something. Now I look at it as really self care and the ritual of it before I go to sleep at night is actually calming. So you saw the first one, which was the cleanser. The next one is the Chibula, which is an unbelievable, active in ingredient um, and it's called immunity serum. And I'm going to take this, it's in a little dropper also by True Botanicals. And I'm gonna put it in my hand like this. I am going to take this vitamin C booster. Now, when it's in this powder form, it stays active and fresh a lot longer than when it's already in a product. So what they did was they separated it out and then a vitamin C booster is really just like, this will stay potent until the last little drop of powder is, is you know, taken out of this jar. So I will put a little bit in like that. I mix them together like that. I mix them together. It dissolves entirely. I You can put it in with the oil, but I like to put it in with the serum because I feel like it gets a little closer to my to my face or my skin or my, I don't know, somehow I just like, I like the way it feels in the serum. So I put it everywhere, but my mom always said it's good to give yourself a little facial, a little teeny facial every night. I love that she's caring for her skin. Yes to the little tiny facial, the facial massage. I wonder if I know why she likes it in the 
uh, serum and not the oil. Vitamin C, or L-ascorbic acid, which is what I'm assuming this is, is water soluble. And in the oil, it can kind of not dissolve and get kind of clunky, whereas in the water-based products, it really soaks in nicely. I wonder if that's why she likes it. I have to look at both of these. What did she call this? Col colloidal? Col col that is some immunity active serum that I am not familiar with. Let's see if we can figure out what this is. The name immunity serum is also like what The Ordinary did with that vaccine product. It's like, it is not a vaccine. And then with the immunity serum, it's like a serum is not really gonna give you immunity. Yeah, unless it's a medication, which this is not. It's a little, eh, it's a little much, but you know, we're just gonna see, what is Chibula? Chibula, isn't Chibula like an ancestor of Bigfoot or something like that? Oh, that's Chewbacca. <laughs> $90, let's find out what's in this. I'm glad she likes it. It does say that it helps with dark spots and uneven skin tone. I noticed she has a little bit of discoloration here, but it's not bad. She's gorgeous and you know, if she doesn't want to treat it, she doesn't have to. Hey, at least they did clinical trials. That is nice to see. You know, if we wanted to look at all of the ingredients in here, Chibula is an Ayurvedic fruit and one of the most bioactive and powerful antioxidants in nature. Really? Really? Because dried herbs like cinnamon and clove are actually the highest antioxidants in nature, but I digress. It says glowy, more youthful skin, hypoallergenic, non-comedogenic, and pregnancy safe. Interesting, if we believe it. One of the most bioactive, photostable, broad spectrum cascading antioxidants. Let me take a look here and see what else I can find. <gasps> it's Harad! Oh my god! When you look at the actual picture of it, well, there you go. It's obvious, I guess it's obviously different in English or Latin than it is in Hindi, but okay. Harad normally comes in like this dried form, and I know that some people say that it's like, you know, amazing for your body or for your beauty. Um, you use it like a spice, basically. But yeah, Harad, I feel. <laughs> Chabula, freaking Chabula. All right. I mean, here's the question though. Does it work in skincare? Cause I don't even know about Harad being used in skincare. I know of Haldi, um, what she was using the cleanser, turmeric, Haldi, and then ginger. Those do have skincare benefits, but I'm gonna have to look into this uh, because I don't know much, if anything about it. A quick search shows up, um, drug resistant tuberculosis in South Africa. Not what I was looking for and definitely not uh, what we were going for. It looks like there is something about pollution induced skin damage but I don't know who did this test or if it's you know statistically significant it is talking about pollution antioxidants skin hydration uh, but I would have to read the whole thing in order to understand what's going on I, I don't know when it comes to this serum for 90 bucks uh, it's a lot for a Chewbacca like if you were to just get Harad you could get it for like a couple bucks it's not that expensive but maybe two botanicals like put it in an amazing serum or something the main ingredient is actually a green tea so Camellia sinensis which which we've spoken about. Uh, aloe, we also have a citrus and glycerin. This is actually really good. We have echinacea, ginger. There's not any fragrance in here. You know what, this isn't bad. I don't know if it's worth $90 and I don't know how this is talking about immunity unless you're going with, again, Ayurvedic medicine and like looking at different doshas and kind of how that plays into things. But this doesn't look like a horrible product. I just don't know if it's worth 90 bucks. Now, the Camellia, Sinensis, Aloe, Glycerin, all of these are water soluble. So it would make sense if she's using that with a vitamin C booster. Here is the vitamin C booster. This honestly is $90. Reminds me a lot of The Ordinaries. The Ordinaries is much less expensive and and um, there are different types of vitamin C, obviously, and there are different qualities of even L-ascorbic acid. When we look at the full ingredients, this isn't just uh, vitamin C. So this is tapioca starch, then you have your L-ascorbic acid and ferulic acid. So very, very, very interesting. I like that they have ferulic. The Ordinary and other brands don't always do that. So I could see that this was a little bit more expensive. I don't know if I'd pay $90 for it, but a ferulic powder plus a vitamin C powder, that stabilizes it and then it does have this little glass packaging you know true botanicals you know they are on my good side i love that brooke loves this i feel like you know just by her consumer experience of liking it in the serum more than the oil it kind of speaks to the chemistry behind this and kind of how it's happening i think that's really beautiful really cool and um, obviously it looks great on her skin and if she has dark spots if she's worried about sun exposure if she lives in a city where there's pollution these products are going to be great for that they're just not going to make you immune to anything so just be aware of that you know what's interesting? She calls it the immunity product. The website changed the name of it. I wonder, I wonder if they, they caught their mistake there. But who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? <laughs> Doesn't get tacky or sticky, but I can feel like, oh, now I can feel that I can put another product on it because my skin is already starting to absorb 
the serum. So I just used the second and third with the, with the booster. The fourth product that I'm going to use is the Pure Radiance Oil by True Botanicals. Is she sponsored by, True? does she own True Botanicals? I mean, get the coin, get the bag, sis, but there's a lot of True Botanicals here. As of November 9th, 2021, she is the face of True Botanicals. Got it. I mean, it makes sense. They are good products. I could see her actually loving them. I'm shocked that she actually knows how they work. I was like, wow, she's a really educated consumer. I think she actually gives a That's really, really nice. Well, you know what? At least it seems like an authentic partnership. Some things it's like you can tell when that kind of stuff is happening. Seems like she actually likes the product. So let's see what she's doing with this oil. And look at that color. Love the color of that. And the smell is just heavenly. This radiance oil smells like, like jasmine. It has neroli, I think it is, and, or neroli, and then rose. I put that all over my face. Oh my God, I love that she actually cares about what's in them. When you look at the color of an oil, it could be one of many things. It could be that the oil is rancid, but oftentimes the richer the oil, the more pungent it is, the more antioxidants it actually has. If you look at olive oil, a lot of us see it and it's like, you know, this light amber color. Real olive oil is bitter as um, it can be almost a green tinge, and that's how you know like it's real antioxidant-rich olive oil. It almost burns your throat going down versus you know the, the other oils that have just sat on the shelves forever. It's a huge difference, and a lot of people don't understand that oils can go rancid. She mentions the scent. I think this also speaks to why it's important for some people to enjoy their routines. She had mentioned that before, skincare felt like a chore, and you have to enjoy something in order to be able to do it, and sometimes sensorially, that's really important. I know that people who have allergies should not be using fragrance, obviously. There are many people that I don't recommend it for but we have an editor named Doris and she's like I love you know the strawberry smelling sprays she loves this she keeps it by her computer when she edits and she sprays herself with like the rose or the strawberry or the watermelon ones and that means a lot to people there are other members of our team uh, who you know even have redness in their skin we have Lily who's in New Mexico and even she uses things with fragrance and even I use things with fragrance and as long as it's not causing issues it's not a problem but I love that Brooke appears to love these as well now, here's the whole shit. it's a hundred and ten dollars for this oil what I was gonna say, what is in here that's worth $110? There's a lot in here. And the question is, is it worth $110? The main ingredient is camellia seed oil. Okay, I see you. Green tea, basically. Grape seed oil, avocado oil, Trader Joe's. Okay, hi. Marula seed oil, the ordinary is even better. Uh, hemp seed oil. Okay, that could be expensive. Chia seed oil, watermelon, barrage seed, rose hip. Evening primrose, argon, squalane, papaya seed oil, passion fruit. All of these are good. And if you wanted to spend $110, you can get them in one bottle instead of purchasing 15 different bottles. But um, I would say you have to know that you like whatever this smell is. And I would say that you have to know that you like skincare oils in order to do that. I think it's a little bit ridiculous for the price. Oh, it does have algae extract <gasps> and red pine and red algae. That is expensive. One of my favorite algae brands is Osea, Osea. They're really good. Alginist is also really expensive, but they have some algae products. You know what? I take back what I said. Because this is an algae oil, I do want to know how much algae is in it, but because this is an algae oil for $110, do you need it in your routine? No. Should you be spending $110 on an oil? No, I am not endorsing that. However, if you have the money and you're looking for an algae product, algae products are expensive, but they are good. Algae is not a plant, nor is it an animal. It is wonderful. It is an amazing creature, organism, organism. It's an amazing organism. And yes, it can help with brightness of the skin. There's some studies showing firmness of the skin. It's fascinating. It's truly, truly wonderful. And we don't know enough about it, but it has shown amazing things for skin. This has frankincense. Looks like it would smell like one of my grandmother's friends with frankincense and rosemary, but you know, to each their own. <laughs> on my lips, my nose, even on top of my eyes. Sometimes my daytime is a little quicker than my nighttime. I spend a little bit more time at night taking off my makeup because usually it's been out, I've been out in the elements all day and also I've had makeup on. So I spend more time at night. I see a couple of dermatologists, one mostly for like sunspots and for um, mole checks and cancer, things like that, and Fraxel. And then I see another one who does like more um, spot therapy and um, light therapy on my skin. And I'm willing to try anything. The last product. I love her. 
<laughs> I love that she discloses this. I love that she's getting mole checks. Please go get your mole checks. They are actually really fun. You just, you share all your moles with the dermatologist and they write them down, they take pictures. It is wonderful, please, please. It also helps us to make sure that there aren't any changes, which could be cancerous. Wonderful that she discloses this. I love that she's willing to try anything. It sounds like she's using Fraxel laser and then LED therapy. Freaking awesome. I love that she discloses that. No wonder her skin, like it has this firmness and this life to it. And that does look like it makes sense that Fraxel is in here. The LED, I don't know what color of LED she's using. I'm assuming it would be like red light therapy and that can help with collagen production, anti-aging, anti-inflammation, etc. Really, really great that she actually discloses that though. Obviously other people's medical history is none of our business, but I do think that even though it shouldn't be illegal, I think that morally or ethically, if someone has had something done, just the way if an image is overly photoshopped, we should know what the makeup did versus what the Photoshop did, right? I feel like if people are selling us their skincare or their skin or their you know looks ethically and morally it's important that they share kind of what they've had done in my personal opinion and of course there are going to be outliers to that but at least that's where I'm at emotionally and mentally right now I just I love this I'm actually enjoying her routine so much even though she's the face of the brand and normally I don't love you know routines that are just all one brand this is a really good one product that I'm going to be using is called resurrection radiance eye cream now I love an eye cream. This one is delicious. It's just, it's thick without being greasy. It is, it's just, I like to put a little bit on my hand and I like to warm it up a little bit. And the warmth somehow dissipates it much more smoothly. And I pat first like that. And then sometimes if I'm in the mood in the morning, I usually take one of my little tools and then go like that with it because my eyes kind of can get puffy. They get puffy very easily. I have allergies. I was going to a desert island. Well, I would have to bring a product that had a sunscreen in it. <laughs> but if I was going to be on a desert island, I think the thing that I would want the most is the radiance oil because it can be used on my hair. It can be used, I sometimes put it on my lips. I definitely put it on my eyebrows. Um, and I feel like I could use multi-purpose with it. Although I do really love this eye cream. I might have to sneak the eye cream in. Mm, I hate an eye cream. It's because most of them are overpriced moisturizers. I do like that she gave us that disclaimer of what she looks for in an eye cream because at least she knows that she is getting something that actually works for her issues. She mentioned puffiness. That tool that she uses in the morning is probably doing more than the eye cream for any fluid retention that builds up overnight. I think that's really important and a lot of people don't get that. Let's see what's in this eye cream and how expensive it is. $78. Again, you get such a tiny amount for $78. Pacifica's Vegan Ceramide Eye Cream. Versed eye cream balm. She might not like that because it's a little bit greasier, but um, Purito, Purito's green eye cream. There are so many eye creams that are actually decent that don't cost a million dollars and that actually do what they say. With this one, let's look at the claims and the ingredients. It does say dark circles and puffiness. All right, I'm gonna hold you to that. I want some vasoconstrictors. I want some tyrosinase inhibitors, maybe some gentle vitamin C, no fragrance. That's what I'm looking for. Let's see what we have. Green tea, good. Neroli, distillate, mango, glycerin, hydrating, coffee seed oil, okay. Lactobacillus ferment, okay. So the coffee, a hay and licorice, coconut fruit extract, aspen bark. Wow, and we do have some citric acid, some lactobacillus, and we don't have any fragrance. I'm still not spending money on it. I still don't think it's worth it, but you know what? It at least the ingredients check out. At least they're not claiming it's gonna help with wrinkles because that's not gonna help with wrinkles. I wouldn't spend my money on this. I would get the caffeine eye cream from The Ordinary and I just put it all over my face. If you were interested in the anti-hyperpigmentation, there are some very gentle vitamin C under eye creams that you could use, but just use something that's safe on the eye area and you can put it all over the face. Honestly, that serum that she was using, that would work perfectly. I'm glad she likes this. I'm glad that she's got the $78 to spend on it, but it is not in my cart, nor is it something that I recommend. Continue with the roller. You do you, boo. If you ask me, there are much less expensive options out there, but at least, this is one of the first times, at least the product is backing up what they're claiming. There's so many trends right now, it's hard to keep track of them. Um, I haven't seen anything that's, that's really crazy. I mean, I remember hearing that for bags, people were putting Preparation H under their eyes. I have not tried it, but I guess it takes down swelling. <laughs> so maybe I should try it. <laughs> um, that was a pre probably the craziest, the craziest thing that I've ever heard. Um, yeah, so I feel like 
Now my face just feels so moisturized. It feels like it's gotten a little attention, but it also feels so clean, but not dry. So you can see how healthy and moisturized and ready to go to bed my face is. I love her earrings. I love her earrings. I, she's not using a moisturizer at night. It looks like that oil is locking everything in for her. I like that she actually told us what her skin type is and kind of what she needs. When it comes to this, um, I would definitely switch out the eye cream for maybe more of a moisturizer. I don't know if she has any major issues. Her skin actually looks really good. I have a feeling it's because of that Fraxel. She does mention that she uses sunscreen during the day or at least to a desert island, which is nice. Honestly, I feel like I would have liked a little bit more variety in what she's using and maybe, you know, to speak a little bit more to, you know, are we worried about fine lines and wrinkles or are we not because the Fraxel takes care of it? Are we worried about hyperpigmentation or is that not an issue for us? I'd like to know a little bit more about that so that we could target this a little bit more and I would like a little bit more of affordable products. But honestly, this is, this is not bad. This was really fun and I didn't even know that she was a spokesperson for the brand. It sounds like she actually gives a sh about the products. Isn't it amazing when someone actually gives a sh about what they use and do? It's just an unexpected shocker. What do I rate this routine? I feel like I don't have all of the information that I would need, but I would give this like a solid seven out of 10. It could be better, but it's not horrible. I I like it. I wish that she would speak more about, you know, societal pressures. I like that she spoke about kind of what her mom has taught her, but how has her skin changed from, you know, when she was a teenage actress versus a young 30s actress versus where she is now. I would wanna know how those things have progressed for her or how her standards around beauty or how her journey through beauty and self-love and acceptance and the products she uses and healthcare with her mole checks have been, uh, if she would be so open to disclosing that. I feel like, especially since she's partnering with True Botanicals, I feel like True Botanicals, marketing idea, True Botanicals could have such a fun time if they did like Brooke Shields then versus now and ask Brooke to create a routine for like her, you know, 20 year old self versus her 30 year old self versus like now. I feel like that would be so cool. It'd be such a good marketing opportunity. Someone find a True Botanicals email or can, do we go knock on their door in San Francisco and tell them this. I would personally like to know more about how Brooke feels about the societal pressures of beauty or how her routine has grown to care for her instead of be that chore that she spoke about previously. Or what makes skincare a chore versus a choice versus a pleasure. That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Let's have a meet and greet in San Francisco and then let's like go knock on True Botanical's door. Anyways, what do you think of this routine? Always remember to stay hydrated, which she did, reapply your SPF, which it sounds like she does, and be beautiful both inside and out, which Brooke definitely is. Let me know if we want also like a deep dive on expectations of young women in the beauty industry. I feel like that kind of stuff has like so been on my mind recently and I hope that you are subscribing. I love you beautiful butterflies and I cannot wait to see you in this other reaction video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.